In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to make this beautiful fascinator. It's a pass for a bridal fascinator and um, you can also use it for a church event. But let's watch out and stay glued. All about the world, no world looks like you. You can put a smile on your face. You're beautiful. everyone and welcome to my youtube channel once again so this is a silk fabric it's a mikado silk and what i want to do now is i want to cut on bias stripe when you want to cut on bias stripe all you need to do is just to fold diagonally like what i did and so i'm going to measure one one inch one inch one inch one inch you will understand what i want to use it to do so in case you don't have the luxury of time to do this, I actually do not have um, the bias stripe I was supposed to use. It's not long enough, so I had to create one for myself. You can buy a bias in the market to save you the stress of what I'm doing here. Okay, so I've measured my one inch of width and I'm just ruling out and I'm also going to cut out. So. And this is not going to be enough for the length of what I wanted it to do. So I'm going to cut two of this bias stripe. A bias stripe is diagonally, don't forget. And the reason why you cut diagonally, it's because the circle, where I'm going to use it for is a circle. And you need something that can stretch. Diagonally cutting your fabric diagonally is going to is going to the fabric is going to stretch when you cut any fabric Diagonally is going to give it a stretch Okay, so it can bend easily around the curves if I don't fold the fabric this way And I just cut like that when I want to bend around the curve It's not going to bend because it's not going to stretch. I hope you understand what I've said cutting a fabric diagonally we give it a stretchy feel so that you can use it around whatever you want to achieve. I hope my grammar is not too plenty, okay? So I have cut the two. And what I'm going to do is just to join the two together like so. Alright, so the next thing I'm doing now, I'm going to fold it in like that. And I'm going to iron it. Alright, I'm going to iron it and I've done that, I have ironed it and so I'm going to use it like that. So that's an original bias, the one I bought from the market but it's not long enough to achieve the purpose. That was why I did what I did like that. Okay, so let's get into the next fabric. So this is the next fabric I'll be using. For the design and that is at wire or your millinery wire and it's of the inches of 51 inches it's 51 inches in length i mean the millinery wire you can do more than that depends on how big you want it to be so to secure those two places together i'm just using my thread i folded it like eight times to make it very thick and i'm just trying to secure very well so that it can stay in one place when you are trying to do so, make sure the, the edge of that iron, that metal doesn't shoot out because it can injure you or shoot out from your fabric. So you have to tie it properly. You have to make sure you tie it properly. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. And roll it with it just to make the thread secured. And this is what we have here. Can you see? Can you see? So I'm going to use it to cut the fabric. I don't have much fabric left, so that's why I'm, I trimmed it off like that. I would have shown you how we can 
drag it so that you can have a firmer face on. We understand. I did an, an example for you. The one I want to do next is just to fold the excess like that and you're just going to sew. You can sew with your needle and thread. Okay, you sew with your needle and thread or you have a sewing machine, you just sew it to run like that. But one thing is when you are doing the sewing, make sure it's very firm. You don't want your neck to be dancing up and down. So you are going to drag the fabric and make sure it's firm. This is what I'm saying. Okay, supposing you have a very big fabric and you want to use this trick, you are going to drag it like that, make sure it's very firm. So you are going to sew the edges all around and when you are done sewing, then you will trim it off. So you hold it like that, you will tie that middle part, you understand, and you are going to sew and when you are done sewing, then you trim it off, just to make it firmer. You understand okay so i'm done with mine i've sewn it all around you can see what i mean by the firmness in fact looking at this now i'm even feeling it's not the same as i want to be another thing you can do is that you can use your peg to hold it all around before sewing so you would have adjusted it to the firmness or right, you understand you would have adjusted it to how firm you want it to be with the peg before you sew it all around I don't know if you get because it has to be firm so that your fascinator will not be dangling or or will I say flapping now if it's a food I will say soggy but this is the fascinator so that it won't be flappy it won't, it won't look loose okay yeah that's the word it won't look loose okay you can see that you can see how flat and how well stretched what I've done is can you see that okay so the bias I have prepared I'm going to use it to wrap the edges you can use your gum to gum very neatly around it like that but I chose to sew it because I have a sewing machine you can also use your needle and your thread okay like I said you can use your gun and okay, so this is what we have here so the next thing I want to do is to wrap that I've used that mold before I've used it before so it's not a new mold but you should get the color of your fabric when buying a mold is an already made mold if you don't want to mold from the scratch so this i already used it before so it's not a new one and uh, it is not the color of the fabric because like i said i just want to use it to do a tutorial for my youtube family so on a normal day if i'm doing that for my client i'm going to use a matching color of fabric for the mold that is if i don't even mold one from the scratch by myself so i'm covering up my metal sick all right i use your gum to do what i've just done you can also use your glue gum so i've been mentioning glue gum glue gum glue gum what is the glue gum okay so we are going to say glue gum now so that is a glue gum i just inserted the gum the glue and the what did they even call that process it looks like a gun <laughs> okay in the glue gun yeah, the glue gone. So I'm just press it. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Okay, what I'm doing is because I don't want my glue gun to waste. That's why I'm interchanging with that and the gun. There are different shapes of mold actually, so you can choose any mold. I'm going to double it. You see, there are many ways to kill a bed. This is not the only style. Or, will I say, this is not the only method you can use to make this design. Okay, there are many ways. We have our various ways of doing things, but this is what I chose to use. Tomorrow I may want to do this and I didn't use this method. The, the most important thing is that it comes out 
it comes out the way I want it to come out. Okay. So guys, why doing this work? I injured myself. And that was why I wrapped my hand. Okay, so now I'm just wrapping it again. Okay. So I'm just going to trim the excess out. Like I said, I've used this mold before, that's why you can still see that thing there in that um, mold. So why doing your space? Make sure it's very neat, neater than this. So I was trying to do a rush work here. I wanted to catch up with some things and I wanted to make sure I finished making the video at that time. So I was trying to rush, okay, to make yours, make sure that yours is finer than this. So I'm just going to place in the middle like so and I'm going to use my needle and thread to start sewing from the net to the cap to the mold rather. Thank you all my subscribers, thank you family, I appreciate your love, thank you for staying glued to this channel and if this is your first time of joining this channel or watching this, please do not forget to subscribe for more amazing stuff. Right, so some of you want to ask, is she a fashion designer? Is she a fascinator designer? Well, I'm both. I do boots for a living. I design hats, fascinators, and I also make beautiful clothes as well. I do the hats to complement my fashion design job, okay? So, in case you check my channel and you see that I either post clothes, although I've not really been doing much of them, um, I've not really been posting clothes, but I will do that when I want to. But for now, let's enjoy the fascinator, right? Okay, so after sewing, what I did was just to cut open that part off you saw it in the video i ripped it off and i'm going to use that bias to just go on around to give that place a nice finishing I can use your whole gum to come as well, like I said, I'm just trying to manage my whole gum. This is why I'm making it with my good gum. Right, so um, I want to make a pattern using the leftover fabric, and so what I'm going to do is to 
that's my pattern paper. Put it on fold, removing the edges, and I'm going to mark four inches. And measure 18 inches downwards. Going to rule. I'm going to just draw a straight line from that four inches up there to that place. And I'm going to trim off. If you have any question, kindly reach me on my WhatsApp. My WhatsApp number is on the screen. So I've cut it out on my fabric and I've just joined them together. So I have this um this will I say cut out from that fabric I used as base for the fascinator and I just want to use it to cover up that place. To add beauty and also maybe to cover the that place is not really rough but i just wanted to add some beauty and yeah to to cover up maybe some rough edges you may use any other thing to design that place you can even use fabric to roll it around depends on what you want to achieve There are different shapes of mold, so I decide to go with any shape you want in the market. I'm just trying to go my round. We are done fixing the cutter. Oh, still minimal. Okay, so now we are done putting the cutter out. And the next thing I want to do is to work with that fabric I cut out. And so look at what I'm doing. And you see. I don't know how to explain it, so please just watch. Okay, so I'm just tying. You can use your thread to tie out. You can use the same tip to tie out. Just use something. I like tying mine because it makes it stay stronger. Sometimes I can sew it with my needle and thread. I'm just looking for the, for, the, for the best place to fix this. So, I think that place makes more sense. And that's why I fixed it there. Isn't this lovely? 
Isn't this beautiful? Right, so you can use this for your court wedding as well. It's so nice. You can wear it to church too. You can use any color fabric to achieve this. Alright, so are you going to try it out? Let me know and kindly send your pictures to me. Alright, so you can even pawn, I mean, place those two flat places together, stitch together, do anything you like with the design. And here we have it. So I'm going to attach my band. I just want to make use of the same position that my previous band was. Okay. To cover up that place. And this was how I used it. And I fixed my headband. And this is what we have here. It's such a beauty. I know. I know. Alright. Thank you so much for watching. See you. See you in my next video. Bye.